Welcome, folks. I am Jabby Kawai, joined by Char Kirk. What's up? We're looking at heavy spoilers, Squid Game breakdown, every Easter egg clue, hidden detail, and ending explained, and some Korean text. Thank you, heavy spoilers, for allowing us to react to this. Very, very much appreciate it. Y'all, if you haven't already, please subscribe, hit that bell icon, all notifications, and vote this up to let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. Not too long ago, we did a reaction to a new Rockstars breakdown. I enjoyed the new Rockstars breakdown of kind of uncovering some of the clues that you missed along the way of watching yeah. the show. The show is so layered that I feel like watching another breakdown is worthwhile because I'm sure that heavy spoilers might tap into things that new rock stars didn't cover. Let's dive into this. Here we go. Okay, so Squid Game is packed with Easter eggs, hidden details, and a lot of clues that hint towards its eventual reveal. The show has taken the world by storm, and after watching it three times since its release, we've wow. come across some mind-blowing details in it that make it even better. Heavy spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen it, then I'm putting a red light on the video right now. If you enjoy the breakdown, then please smash the thumbs up button and make sure you subscribe for videos like this each and every day. With that out of the way, thank you for clicking this. Now let's get into our Squid Game breakdown. Okay, so the opening of Squid Game may be confusing at first. We watch as the convoluted rules are explained and see kids play it, who are of course Gihon and Sangwoo. This oh, flashback is key as it foreshadows how the game will end, which was of course with a round of Squid Game. I assumed well, at least one of them was the main character. Game. Yeah. Lee Lin is a lifelong gambler that's always betting on the wrong horse. Due to his addiction and need to make his life better, he's actually the perfect person to participate in the games. The idea of him betting on horses of course foreshadows the future as it's explained to him that Squid Game is very much the same thing just with people being the ones that are bet on. In a way, he's similar to the Southern Gentleman VIP who keeps picking the wrong contestant. This huh, would foreshadow yeah. Junho's death at the hands of the front man as the VIP would say, I always pick losers. He picked Junho to pleasure him, only for the character to turn around and attack oh, him. Wow. Junho was then caught out in this quote unquote game of life and death and he's apparently killed. Though I am still or hashtag is John Ho is still alive. Yes, agree. Now, uses the lucky numbers of six and eight to win, which they do. However, these numbers appear many times in the show. They always represent the middle of the herd in a race, and the numbers also appear in this fashion just before the bridge challenge. As one of the VIPs explains, everyone goes for the middle, and that is to find safety when threatened. Mm -hmm. It's better to stay amongst the people instead of taking your own risks, but that strategy also proves to be very, very stupid. Six also appears again as there are six games that take place over six oh, days. That's true. And the religious player would later choose the number six Aww. as it represents the day God made humans in Christianity. Funnily enough, Gihon won 4.56 million at the horse track, and this moment is just some amazing attention to detail. 4.56, he's does number end up 456. Helping later on in the bridge oh, game, that's true. And this may be her paying him back after she pickpockets him early on. Gihun's nice nature would be foreshadowed, as even after being chased by violent loan sharks, he would help her when he thought she simply fell over. Now these loan sharks offer some interesting parallels when they threaten Gihun's kidney. This is similar to how the body parts of the losers in the game would be harvested off, and it lends weight to the theory that they're all actually working for Ilnam. Down on his luck, he needs 10,000 won for a present for his kid, which is the same money he gave as a tip to the betting shop teller. This figure would be constant for Kihun, yeah. as after winning the game and having billions, he withdraws just 10,000 won. The prize itself is in a box similar to those that the dead bodies are kept in, and it makes for an amazing yeah. Easter egg in this scene. Now, unfortunately, due to his money problems, Kihun cannot afford to give his daughter a fancy dinner. She's given what her mother perceives as junk food and says how her stepfather bought her steak dinner, which puts further pressure on him to get money. Gihun's status was too low to afford it, but he would finally be able to have a fancy dinner before the final game, but oh. it's, it's just as miserable as this one. Now from here, his paths cross with the Squid Game recruiter, who gives him two options. Gihun can either play as red or blue, and though it seems like a pretty shallow choice, there may be other layers to it. He chooses blue and ends up as a player, but the red card is very similar to the color of the gods' uniforms. Mm -hmm. Now, whilst the gods seem like they're in control, they're forced to obey the rules and also killed for even showing their faces. I heard that the uh, creators of the show yeah. actually disabused the notion that- I heard that too. If you p chose red, that you were gonna become a soldier. But it works out so nicely. <laughs> I mean, maybe they have something planned that they're gonna reveal in season yeah, two that maybe. makes sense of how they've collected these soldiers. I've uh, read some comments where people were saying 
saying that actually the creator was talking about how season two is going to be a flashback. Oh, the whole of season two? Apparently. It could be that it's showing the front man story, like how he got there. That is ever so slightly frustrating if the entirety of season two is a flashback. Because then Who it's knows? like, we got to wait through all that just to get back on track. It's like Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid 3 was a complete flashback before we got to continue on with the actual main story of Solid Snake in Metal Gear Solid 4. They sleep in cells and are given numbers too, so it is possible that they're all part of the operation, just like the players. Yeah. The game theme is kept up throughout the God CCTV terminals, as they're shaped like sit-down arcade cabinets. In the series, we learn that it's been about 33 years of games so far. I didn't so even it makes do the sense math. that Ilnam would get this inspiration from the popular arcades of yesteryear. The guard hmm. symbols also have a lot of connections to gaming, with the triangle, circle, and square reminding me of a PlayStation controller. Yeah. yeah. Each shape does have meaning too, as circles are workers, triangles are soldiers, and squares are the managers. I didn't even like think about how it looked like arcade cabinets. The, sol yeah. the soldiers were like operating with. I didn't even pick up on that, but definitely the PlayStation controls and like who's who mm -hmm. in terms of the hierarchy, yeah. right? Because it's like circles were the most expendable ones for yeah. sure. Exactly. The amount of angles on your helmet also denote your hierarchy as well, with no shapes being the lowest tier. The front oh. man has many contours and the VIPs have a ridiculous amount oh, right wow. up to the Southern gentleman. Huh who appears to have the highest out of all of them, which is why he can do what he wants. Wow. Ilnam's mask also has a massive amount on them, but we'll talk about that later on in the video. Yeah. Now squares, circles, hmm. and triangles also appear throughout the series at numerous points. Oh. When the group play red light, green light, we can see oh, them it's on the, the gate at the door. That. Next to the gates are fake metal windows, and these are made up of the shapes, circles, triangles, and squares. Huh. The card also has the shapes on them, yeah. and the layout of Squid Game is of course made up of squares, circles, and triangles. When Ilnam visits his quote-unquote house yeah, in the Marbles game, you can also catch the shapes on the gates outside of it, further hinting to him being the one who's behind it. I wonder what the circle, triangle, and square also mean for Korea, because I vaguely remember that on like one of my martial arts uniforms as part of like a Taekwondo thing, and I didn't really know what that meant. I didn't mm -hmm. know symbolically what that was supposed to indicate. Oh, maybe but, someone can tell us in the comments. Yeah, but I'm guessing that is a very, it's a very Korean thing. Now back to the game, and the idea of people playing with their bodies is set up here, as every time that gi -hun loses, he gets a painful slap, but if he wins, he gets money. Now I'm not sure how lucky Gihun is getting the chance to play a game for billions, as I'd have noped right out of there just seeing the creepy doll for red light green light. However, if the series hasn't ruined your life, you can visit the doll at Makaland Horse Carriage Museum. Now speaking of people whose lives have been ruined, the guy whose number is on the card has also complained that he's received non-stop oh, calls <laughs> since the show aired, and I feel so sorry for him. Oh, now dang. with his winnings with a recruiter, Gihun heads off to treat his mother, which is reminiscent of how Sang Woo would ask Gihun to give his mother money before he ended his life in the final game. Gihun goes to get picked up, and the password is red light green light, which foreshadows the first game. Upon oh, yeah. waking up, Gihun realizes that his number is 456, that? signifying that he's the lowest there. I'm connecting Ilnam, it now, okay. The game's architect being number one. Yeah. Ilnam even translates to first man or number one man giving oh. us an indication of his status. Gotcha. The prize money is of course divisible by gi -hun's number, and this gives us a further clue to one being in charge. gi -hun didn't pick up on him saying he knew what was going on, and he underestimated him instantly, much like how we all did. The pair also meet with gi -hun standing over Il Nam as he's in a bed, which mirrors the final scene that the two share together. Mm. Now inside the room mm, with all true. the beds, we get a clue on the walls as to what each game will actually be. Right. However, in a dark twist of fate, the clues only fully start to reveal themselves when people die after red light, green light. However, That's we see true. every single game on the wall, which right. ends with the final yeah. one being the Squid Game. Now, music is a prominent part of the show, with the song Blue Danube being played before and after each and every game. This piece of music by Johann Strauss II was commissioned and later urged to be light and upbeat as his nation Austria had lost to Prussia in the Seven Week War. This was intended to keep players upbeat before and after the slaughter, much like the citizens of Austria after that conflict. 
Other parts of the preamble before going to the game are the cartoony bright colored stairs. Can you break that down for me, what he was just talking about with the music? So the song was commissioned by the Austrians after they got beaten by the Prussians in the Seven Week War. And it was asked to be light and upbeat so that it could lift the moods of the people of Austria. And so it's being used in this way. For the same effect. For the same effect, yeah, to yeah. uplift the spirits of the contestants. But it just works out as being creepy, honestly, in my opinion. That's so bizarre. Which are similar to images created by MC Escher. His work of infinite and wacky mm. stairs symbolizes the monotony of climbing up for nothing. It matches up here as the contestants are in a loop and also most of the time climbing up for nothing. Now Ilnam is the key in the red light green light game as he smiles showing he's happy and more alive than ever. We know he was in hospital as that's where he would later be picked up from but unlike the other contestants he would not be gassed. He is smiling as it's probably the last time he'll play one of his favorite games. Yeah. And he's enjoying being a participant instead of a watcher. The creepy girl robot has a squid game called Hairpin in her hair. And we are treated to another hint that Ilnam is special as he's not scanned by her. Each of the players gets a green overlay indicating that they're a target. However, Ilnam is completely fine and probably not in any danger. Interestingly, the person directly next to him isn't highlighted either and it is possible that he has a protective ring around him so that the machine can't even fire close to him in case it kills oh. him by accident. Now the father-son-esque relationship between Ilnam and Gihan is one of the most enthralling parts of the show. When they aren't helping each other, they are always incredibly close and finishing games by seconds. Yeah. It happens in the red light green light game with Ilnam gloating that he beat him, but it would later reverse in marbles with Gihan taking that. His deathbed is where the final game between the two takes place and Gihan would beat him with seconds to go as the character passes away. Though we will never know if he knew that he lost the game, it doesn't matter as this final scene shows that people will help one another and that there is decency beyond what he believed. See, isn't that it also hair paints the two red? as opposites and sets up Gihan trying to take down the squid game. Now Ilnam also gives a hint that the pair might be related as Gihun says he can't drink the milk and instead asks for chocolate. I mean, it's entirely possible that that was a setup. Ilnam planted that, you know, and so the guy having colored hair, it could just be that people in Korea, just like Japan, have colored hair also. Oh yeah, they, so, they love coloring their but, hair in um, Korea. To me, it's a possibility, or it indicates a possibility that that's, that's all a plant to stir Gihan in a particular way for some odd reason because of some bigger plan that has not been revealed to us yet. Ilnam says that his son used to do the same thing and that he'd beat him for it. On a personality level, it's possible that the two also echo one another mm. as both leave their families in order to get involved with the games. Now the vote to continue the game leads to some very, very interesting moments and it contains buttons that are green and red. The vote starts in reverse order, which makes Gihan seem important, but really it's done to ensure that Ilnam has the deciding vote should it come down to it. Right, Sang okay. and Ali end up in town together and this foreshadows their partnership in the marble game. At this point, the 10,000 won appears again, as it's the amount Sangwoo gives to poor Ali in this moment. Yeah, it's not all you, you give to him, is it? You traitor. Now, in this hiatus, a number of deaths are also foreshadowed. Daksu jumped off a bridge to escape the gangsters, and he would later die after falling off the glass bridge. Ali took the money from his boss, but he was later eliminated when Sangwoo stole his marbles. Sabiuk would threaten a man with a knife to his neck, but would die the same way, bringing everything full circle from this. On top of this, Sangu tried to end his life in a bathtub wearing a tuxedo, and this foreshadows his final act in which he does this in the rain. Dexu's minions would turn on him and lose respect for him, just like the marble game, yeah. and it's sort of like poetry, they rhyme. How to do one of those? Now, during the quote unquote chance meeting with Ilnam and Gihun, Ilnam says how outside is torture, hinting that he would rather be inside enjoying his creation. Poor Gihun also meets his ex-wife and leaves his umbrella by accident at their flat. This gives us a hint at him always forgetting his umbrella, mm. which he says is his reason for choosing the shape in the now TikTok famous honeycomb game. <laughs> now there's also one key moment here that becomes so heartbreaking once you finish the show. Jun Ho spends the episode following up on leads about the game and tracks down Gihun and asks him for help to find out what's going on. Gihun could have actually put an end to the game at this point, but instead he participates in it and wins, which puts him on a course to attempt to end things anyway. The players all return, and it seems like Ilnam wasn't actually knocked out, as we see him moving whilst he should be asleep. We start to see the form of our hmm. squad in episode 3, and Ilnam further hints he is powerful by saying he won't die easily, which yes, he won't. 
He's referred to as the old major who's been in the army all their life and as we learn he's been running the squid game for years. In another slight hint, Ilnam says that their meals are essentially what his wife would make him and their kids for lunch, which further ties the setup to him. Sangwoo's morality right, breakdown yeah. also starts here in the honeycomb game, as he allowed people to basically get shapes that would leave them in very difficult positions. Diu continues his theme of turning on people after they help him by accepting the lighter, and 111's doctor skills are shown for the first time as he handles the game with ease. This makes sense why he's later taken to harvest organs for the gods, and it's nice that it's set up here. The scale of this inside job is shown as one of the gods deletes footage at the start of episode 4, showing there was more illegal activity inside the organization itself. Get it? Organization. Organization, anyway, moving on. What? No, what? 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 I don't understand. Organization. Oh, organization. Because it's organs? Oh, gotcha. Very clever. The characters are fascinating mirror images as well, with Sai Byuk and Mia Niao being opposite sides of the same coin. Also, yeah, I'm apologies for butchering all these names. Now, <laughs> while both are desperate survivors and ruthless, even when helping each other, Sai Byuk sees being a lone wolf as the best means to getting to survive, whilst Mia Niao uses her craziness and tenacity to blend in with the strongest. It's why she says she's good at things, unless she's not, because she uses other people's skills. As the honeycomb mm. game wraps up, we see how Jun Ho learns the hierarchy as he's scorned for being in the wrong place. Later on, he swaps costumes with his manager, which is why he has power later. However, the doctor is fully in with the gods, and you can actually tell they try and keep some alive during the executions so that later on he can harvest the organs from their bodies easier. Further hints that the game is rigged for Ilnam happen as the brawl is called off instantly when he says that he's scared. Right. His bed is also the only one that isn't flipped, showing the respect that those in authority have for him. Miao Nyo has a little coitus session with the gangster and he says how he thinks that she will be responsible for his death that night. While he didn't die when he predicted, she does kill him in the end. Yeah. She is mugged off quite a lot during the tug of war game and is forced to seek a new team who call her old woman. Further hints about the Ilnam twist occur here, as he knows how to win at Tug of War. The guy is an expert in all of the games, as he of course played them when he was growing up. Now during the Tug of War scene, we even see a hint of how Ilnam would have escaped should his team have failed. Each person has locks on them to attach them to the rope, which is of course what ensures you go down with your team. However, though Ilnam initially had locks like the rest of the team, they are gone when he wins. Mm. It shows he would have just slipped off the rope if it came down to it. And shout out to YouTuber Maxi Doxy for spotting this really cool detail. Yeah. Now it's around oh. this time that Jun Ho also uncovers the data on the games. And when looking through the files, the 2021 starts at number two instead of one. Correct. This further hints yeah. towards Ilnam being off the books and actually in charge as he's not keeping records on himself. After the game, it sort of foreshadows how Ilnam and Gi Hun's relationship will go as the latter gives him something to cover his wet trousers. I think Ilnam actually tricked everyone with this, as beside his head you can catch an empty bottle of water, yeah. which he likely tipped over his pants. However, Gion is extremely kind here, and stays behind to help him. Ilnam then reciprocates it by giving Gion the number one jacket, which may foreshadow how he could end up in control of the games. Right. Some have said how this is to protect one. him, as the gods won't do anything to harm player one. On top of this, I see it as a changing of the guard, as the most important players are swapping place, and it's very much a passing of the torch. Mm. Gi Hun's kindness is shown once more, as he opts to play with Ilnam in a team game, whereas everyone thinks you need someone strong. He didn't want him to die due to being the odd one out, potentially getting executed, and thus he picked him to be by his side. Ironically, Gi Hun's kindness actually quote unquote killed Ilnam, or at least it ended the game for him. Whilst he didn't die, if he'd simply left him, Ilnam simply would have skipped this round and went through to the next one. That's true. Ilnam yeah. would have definitely known this, and this is why the day before he pretended to be very ill and also weak. When the selection process was going on, he also sat at the back, rejected being chosen, and then moved out the way in order to avoid being picked as a player. He's the only one who didn't go looking for someone to team up with, because he knew that remaining behind would be a free pass. Ilnam once more shows his knowledge and connection to the games by saying that the Marble One takes place in the area where he used to live. He goes looking for his house and comes across a perfect recreation of it, which lets us know that it was modelled on the home he used to have. 
Interestingly, Gihan also says that the alleyway in it resembles where he used to live, so potentially this is another clue to them yeah. being father and son. Now a big hint that he drops here is that Ilnam says he used to stand behind a pole and watch his son and their friends play games together. That part did make me wonder if maybe they were related. There was something that really moved me in the way that he was talking about it. We see that Gihan has a mother, but we don't see the father. Right. And so we don't know what the backstory is there. Right. So potentially, how weird or cool or whatever would that be to have it come around full circle and be like, oh, you're his son. But then how messed up is that, that you would allow your son to participate in that game? They've well established that Ilnam is a messed up dude at the end of the day. The only reason he kept Gihan alive is because he developed a friendship with him, but otherwise he didn't really give a shit about him. In fact, he was annoyed by him in the beginning. Yeah, in the right? beginning, and then things changed. And, and so it would be a weird coincidence and it wouldn't surprise me if the story eventually went there and that would do even more to just mess with Gihan's head yeah as we come back to him in the present in I'm guessing now season three and watch his son and their friends play games together this was completely unbeknownst to them and it mirrored the way that Ilnam would watch the players in the game without them knowing however he also says that he really wanted to play with them which mirrors how he would enter the mm -hmm. games in order to participate in the marbles game chi Yun is paired with Sabiuk. They talk about the possibility of leaving and going on an island retreat together, and in a brutal twist of dramatic irony, they were all, of course, on an island together. Oh, true. Gihan does oh, show wow. his gambling addiction once more, as Ilnam knows that he will bet it all just for a chance to win. Now, if Ali's death didn't rip your heart out, seeing poor Ilnam die was gut wrenching, as Gihan had to go to the dark side and abandon his morals. Knowing what we know now, it becomes obvious that Ilnam wasn't killed at this point, as not only is he the only player that we don't see die, but there's also no blood or a body when we cut to the white right. shirt. Mm. Now Ilnam reveals himself as the owl in episode 7, which makes so much sense as we see his hands, which look just like it. You did say when that happened, and I was all like, oh, maybe it's the, the policeman's brother or whatever. You were like, no, his his hands look too old. But we didn't put the, the dots together then. Like, we didn't connect it then, but you were right, because you were like, those hands look old. Well, I didn't want to be racist and assume that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's Korea, all that K-beauty, of course, like, they would have nice young looking hands. Yowl is fitting as it's a spirit animal and is wide and fiercely intelligent. Mm -hmm. Having a spirit animal of an owl can bring you luck, which matches up really well with the character as he brings wisdom and luck throughout the entire game. Notably, Ilnam doesn't meet with the rest of the VIPs as he's had his fix and decided that watching is just enough for now. At the end of the show, he said he made the game for entertainment and now he's finally had the itch scratched, so to speak, which does explain his absence. During the bridge game, we have the mention that it's human nature to hide in a pack of people. This has been a theme of the show as groups formed amongst the contestants and this obsession with being in a group or team has now become their downfall due to how the bridge game works. Being cautious and at the back finally pays off after being the worst strategy and it means that Gihan has the easiest time. Now should Ilnam have made it at this point, I think that the lights would have been left on so that he could see the thickness of the glass and perhaps he didn't want to do this game as yeah, those heights are terrifying. <laughs> Once the bridge game is over, we are left with our three survivors and it makes for an amazing couple of final episodes. They are treated like VIPs and then given a steak dinner calling back to Gihan's daughter. Obviously, mm. they have ranked up as the food is opulent and they're given fancy clothes so they no longer have to wear the green tracksuits. They are at a triangle table and if you recall, the triangle is a step above the average worker for the gods. That's true. It's a subtle hint they've been promoted based on their game performance and it sort of just ties everything together. Sadly, my favourite character gets taken out and yeah. we're left with just two. The final game is Squid Game and just like the one with the recruiter, they're given a choice of offense or defense. After the last death, we see a big change. Oh, with wow. Gihan I didn't no even remember that. Cautiously mm. and at the back. This time he chooses offense, signifying his change to be a more offensive player, yeah. which we will also see at the end with his rip roaring rampage of revenge beginning. Gihon ends up winning, and this calls back to the beginning in which he also took that. Once all is said and done, yay, Gihon has his winnings. And if it was me, yeah, I'd have bought a shiny Charizard and a hell of a lot of Funko Pops, the limited edition ones, with the Chase, the Chase sticker on them. <laughs> now the front man toasts to him and explains the horse metaphor. 
due to the findings at the end of episode 5, we know that he was also a player and that he likely won because he's still alive. Mm -hmm. Perhaps he became bored with his winnings and ended up joining the game in order to oversee it. The front man, Ilnam and Gihan are all people that ended up putting their family to the side in order to be part of the games right. and decides that there's these little parallels going on with all the characters. The front man is somewhat an opposite to Gihan as both are winners but one chose to participate in an authority role whilst the other wants to take the organisation down. I do think that Jun Ho is alive as he's shot yeah. in the same spot as Inho and the latter does survive so it makes sense that he would too. Potentially he's had to lay low for a year to wait for the games to start again so that he can gather evidence as it was all likely destroyed during his escape. Gihun withdraws 10,001 again with this being the amount that was needed at the start to impress his daughter. After his mother's death, we get a time jump of one year and see that his life hasn't changed all that much. Similar to the VIPs, he's found little enjoyment in the fortune that he's been blessed with and he's just very, very miserable. However, the big reveal happens, which is one of the most tense scenes I think I've ever seen. Ilnam, the surrogate father figure in the game for Gihun, is revealed to be the architect and oh my god, who saw this coming? I didn't. I know some of you in the comments did, but I definitely didn't. Uh, we learned that he was simply bored and needed entertainment and I don't know why he didn't just go to space like the rich men in the west. <laughs> the connection between the pair continues as Ilnam was a money lender and Gihun was of course a victim of them. Sure. Of course each contestant had debts but Gihun's was literally as a result of debts to money lenders so Ilnam very much forced him through it all as his puppet. They play one last game to see if humanity is truly good which, thank God, it turns out to be. Yeah. After this, Gihun decides to go on a revenge tour and he dyes his hair red. The director talked about this matter with the Radio Times and said that Gihun's red hair represents that he will never be able to go back to his old self and it's also a sign of his rage. Red okay. is, of course, a colour yeah. that was associated with the gods in the games and it shows how he's very much switched from a player into an authority position. It's the perfect way to end the show and seeing the games are still going on leaves you very hyped for next time. Overall, this might be one of the most complex shows today on Netflix, as each setup or shot has a purpose and reason behind it. Yeah. It's very much a lightning in the bottle series that has struck a chord that's made it a complete global phenomenon. The game itself is of course a metaphor for how the rich play with the lives of normal people, yeah. and there's a lot of similarities to capitalism and how many are clamouring over each other whilst the rich rule all. Overall, yeah. it was fantastic. And if you spotted anything we missed, then I'd love to hear it below. That was thorough. Yeah, that was really, really thorough. I think that what Heavy Spoilers was saying at the end, he's saying something that we sort of all understood inherently in watching the show. It's like, we are so occupied with all the nonsense, the distractions of life that we're all hit with. We all have these toys and, and, and the news and the politics and yeah. all this stuff that we're constantly being distracted by all the time. While we are occupied with all that, the rich keep getting richer. Yeah, You know, like and, while there was a pandemic going on and people were struggling and losing their jobs and rich people were playing with the stock market and making more money than ever before while a lot more people in the world were suffering. Right. It's crazy. I mean, it's kind of like what you said in our discussion after we watched the new rock stars break down. It's kind of like, okay, we see all of this now mm -hmm. and we understand it and the show is making a point. What do we do with that? Right. I don't know. Where, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. I don't have the answers, but I do think that the first step is to see it right sure. and then once you see it then you can kind of dissect how you might forge ahead and do things differently in order to make changes the last thing that i experienced like this that it, it was violent but also trying to send a message home ironically mentioned earlier it was metal gear solid actually because it's this violent video game but it's talking about nuclear warfare right and it's trying to talk about how nukes are bad <laughs> war is bad war is bad yeah meanwhile play this violent game yeah meanwhile you're executing <laughs> soldiers left and right it's almost like the strings are being pulled on us we are being puppeted to tear each other apart while the rich are just entertained. Yeah, and I, I wonder as well. L laughing from their chairs in the hills. <laughs> yeah, exactly. From from the highest echelons of yeah. society in the theater or whatever the hell. Yeah. But I do wonder if there is any way to play the game where you join forces 
and maybe you come out of it alive or well the point is that you can't yeah exactly yeah. either you play the game and you win or you don't and you have to convince everyone else not to and then you lose right and and that's the altruistic thing would have been if they had done that then all the families of the deceased would have got a hundred million was it like a hundred million yes. one each but they would have gotten nothing and i guess what it's illustrating is that's not in our nature to be that altruistic Correct. There was a moment later in the show, I think it was uh, the second to last episode, if I'm not mistaken, where the husband who had to kill his wife yeah. was just like going crazy. He's like, we should get out of the game. We should get out of the game. We should all vote to get out of the game. And Gihan's best friend, former best friend, uh, the smart one who was- Yeah, Sang Woo. Sang Woo. He was like, we've come too far. We've come way too far to just vote ourselves out now. Yeah. And it's like, but he dies. <laughs> And it's like, you'd rather take a chance. You've come so far and you've seen so much atrocities up to this point, and yet you're still going to keep playing because you've come too far to back out now. Well, yeah, because look at the, the piggy bank full of money. It's billions of dollars, so. Right, but it's billions of dollars you might not have and you might just die. Oh. I think probably at its core, what it's saying as well is that we are all insanely hopeful. It's, and selfish. It's Yeah, it's that weird mix of hope and selfishness yeah. that drives the characters through to the end of the game. The math teacher, when he was on the glass bridge, he did the probability in his head and was like, whatever what? minuscule chance that they get it right, he was just like, well, screw it then, I'm just running. Yeah, it was one in 30,000. Yeah, like, like it was, the odds were crazy. Like the odds are more likely that you'll die. Right. You know? There's this stage in Super Mario Brothers 3 where the screen will just keep moving. So you have to play. If yeah. you don't move, you will die. Exactly. And that's, that's kind of what this game feels like. It's like, if you don't take action, you will die. Yeah. And I think that in itself is also, ironically, another philosophical angle to consider that I don't think anyone's really talking about, which is in the game of life, if you don't move, you will just perish. You'll get left behind. You have to do something with your time, sure. otherwise you will just die. So take action, move. I know that the show is not really aiming to talk about that or impart that on people, but I do like that angle as well. Especially in today's day and age, it's very easy to get complacent and down and not be motivated to do anything at all. Sure. And just be stagnant. A stagnant life will kill you, mm -hmm. which is bizarre, but it's true. It's like, you'd think that if you just don't move, you'll be all right, but yeah. that's actually more likely, even with your money. That's another crazy thing to think about because a lot of people are like, oh, I just want to save my money. And they put it in a checking account and they just keep it there. And it's like, but that's actually actually losing money. You're actually losing by keeping your money in a checking account as opposed to something as nominal as a savings account. Right. And so it's actually better to put your money somewhere where it's actually moving, actually doing something, even though that seems more risky, because it will actually accumulate more wealth over time. Mm -hmm. as, I don't know, I'm getting all lost in the deep end here, but like the point is to fucking move. Yeah. <laughs> you, you gotta keep moving. Make choices, keep yeah, moving. Make choices. Hopefully they're Take good action. ones. Take action, exactly. Help your neighbors. I mean, don't be stupid, but take action. And I didn't even think about the fact that like the two girls when they were together. Sebyuk and, and her yeah. young friend. It, in episode six. Yeah. And she's like, oh, we could go to an island. And it turns out they're on an island. I know. There's I was like, oh yeah, the dramatic irony. Yeah. Hadn't even thought about that. Nice I, one. I hadn't considered that at all. And so it's wonderful to watch these breakdowns where it's like, oh my God, it's pointing out the obvious that, like, I didn't even think about that. I love that you're able to break it down like this and see the parallels or even like how Sebia and um, the crazy curly haired lady, I've forgotten her name, mm -hmm. how they're basically like opposites of each other, like mirrors of each other. I right. thought that was a really cool observation too. And the fact that you can break down this show like this just emphasizes the strength of the writing. Right. Because if it was a garbage show, there would be nothing to break down. But right. the fact that we're able to, it's brilliant. Having watched two breakdowns of the show and an honest trailers of it, it's making me realize it's not just a fad. It's not just hype. It really is one of the best shows ever made. Yeah, really, um, really good. Save for... The bad, Eng the bad English actors. Oh, what, no? Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever, they weren't English, but they were English-speaking actors, and they were horrible. The foreign actors, like, yeah. I, I, Apart from Ali, a foreign actor, who was good. Really, really hope that someday they go back and dub them, because, God, they were awful. But outside of that, <gasps> excellent, an excellent, excellent show. Once again, another breakdown video not talking about those guys who were terrible. Yeah. That could have destroyed the show. Anyways, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell icon, all notifications, and vote this up to let YouTube know you enjoyed what you watched. I'm Jabby Koei. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.